The Space Shuttle Discovery resting on the launch pad at the Kennedy Space Center, waiting for commands to go into orbit. It is expected to blast off in less than 11 hours. Discovery's launch is scheduled for 7, 10 a.m. Thursday, Eastern. CNN, of course, planning live coverage. This shuttle mission will be historical in a way made possible only by the end of the Cold War. There will be a Russian cosmonaut aboard. It will be the first of what both countries are hoping will be many shared missions. Our man John Holloman in Florida with the latest on this mission and a chat with a NASA administrator and a cosmonaut who's going to sit this mission out, but who has been training with American astronauts. Take it away, John. Bernie, thanks. The shuttle Discovery, which is over my shoulder right now, is being filled with liquid fuel, which it's hoped will power the main engines and the solid rocket boosters into space um, about, uh, oh, 11 hours from right now. NASA engineers and the launch management team say that the shuttle is in perfect condition for launch tomorrow morning, just after 7 o'clock Eastern Time. While all shuttle flights make history, this one has political as well as scientific significance. The shuttle Discovery is cleared for takeoff Thursday morning. The six-person crew includes the first Russian to travel on a U.S. spaceship and marks the beginning of much closer cooperation between the U.S. and Russian space program. It's an enormous change. We were competing with the Russians. We wanted to get there first. And now on this mission, we're going to learn from each other. We're going to compare notes on how you do Earth observations. We're going to operate robotic equipment. And most of all, we'll learn how to get ready for the most noble mission to build a joint space station together. Sergei Krikalov has spent years aboard the Russian Mir space station and says riding the shuttle shouldn't be too different from what he's used to. Just what um, surprised me um, is it was a similarity in our programs in kind of training, in kind of job. We, we found a lot of uh, different things, things in our program, in training, but I remember my first impression, what surprised me was our similarity. The astronaut crew has been training with Krikalov for a year. There are a lot of things that we do that are alike, but there are an awful lot of things that we do that are drastically different. Uh, you might think that in, in Russia, in the Russian program, they didn't have very much control over what they did and that, you know, they're pretty rigidly controlled, such is not the case. They have a lot more freedom than we do in deciding what goes on. During the eight-day mission, the crew will launch a flying saucer, which NASA calls the Wake Shield Facility. It will trail behind the shuttle and create an ultra-vacuum, which can't be duplicated on Earth. Experimenters will try to grow wafers of galenium arsenide on the back side of the saucer, which could someday make computers eight times faster than anything now available. In the Space Hab laboratory, astronauts will grow near-perfect crystals, which could lead to cures for dozens of diseases. The best that can happen is that there can be some very useful products that come out of it. And as was mentioned earlier, in the pharmaceutical area, if um, a cure, a cure were to come about for a disease such as AIDS or cancer, um, that involves billions and billions of dollars to uh, industry and uh, significant profits. The last time astronauts and cosmonauts worked this closely together, an Apollo capsule mated with the Soyuz, and Russians and Americans shook hands in orbit for the first time. Our guest tonight, live from the uh, Kennedy Space Center in Florida, Daniel Golden, who's the administrator of NASA, a man uh, who is uh, who's very excited about this mission, and another man who is as well, Vladimir Titov, a Russian cosmonaut who's been in training for this and other space shuttle missions, but. Uh, at least uh, for the next few days, Mr. Titov is going to be here on Earth rather than in the shuttle. He has a partner who is the uh, cosmonaut astronaut for the mission that begins tomorrow. Mr. Golden, tomorrow's launch marks the first time a Russian flies in a United States spaceship. And you have said already it marks the beginning of a new era of cooperation between the U.S. and the Russian space programs. What is the logical conclusion of this new cooperation? What's down the road for the U.S. and the Russians in space? Well, in the near term, we're going to be building the world's most important space research facility. It's going to be a space station that'll be 200 miles above the Earth, and instead of building weapons, we'll be making life better here on Earth through the research we do there. But in the long term, there's one place to go, or two places, Mars, the asteroids, the exploration. We'll never do exploration in this new age if we do it by ourselves. It will be an international program. Well, as you know, uh, critics of U.S. cooperation with for the former Soviet Union, now Russia, in the past, have said 
how can you depend on the Russians? Their, their government for a long time was this communist government that wasn't at all like ours, and now there are questions about the stability of the Russian government that's in office at the moment. Um, what do you tell people when they ask you, uh, how can we depend on the Russians to have the same kind of space program in a year that they have today? Americans are bold and not afraid of difficult things, and yes, there's risk. But I'll tell you, I've been to Russia many times. There is one thing that the Russians will never let go of, their space program. If you take a look at what happened during these difficult times, last year the Russians launched twice as many rockets during the peak of instability, twice as much as the U.S. I believe in our Russian partners in terms of being strong in space, and we're going to work with them to make this world a better place. Mr. Titoff, you've been training with American astronauts for at least a year now. What do you see as the differences between the U.S. space program and the program in your home country? Um, <clears throat> My opinion is we have a different uh, vehicle. Uh, you have space shuttle. Uh, we have um, our main way with uh, stations. This is, it was the station salute, uh, right now Mir. But uh, problems uh, which we um, this, um, salute, solve in space is the same problems. It's a scientist problem. How can uh, people uh, live in space? Uh, I think we can, uh, working together, it will be okay. <laughs> are there, are there many, many problems for you as a Russian working uh, with the U.S. space program? Um, uh, right now, I haven't a problem. Uh, main pr main, uh, my problem is, is my uh, English language. I'm sorry if i mm, uh, talking not very good. <laughs> Uh, but good sense. Um, but uh, mm, preparing for flight uh, may be the same because uh, we prepare for same uh, walking in space. You, like your fellow cosmonaut, uh, Sergei Krikalov, are married, you have children. How does your family take the fact that uh, you're gone for long periods of time? You were in space in the Mir 365 days in a row. How do they put up with this? <laughs> uh, when we married, uh, my, my, my wife not asked me about uh, uh, will I fly in space or not. But uh, when I said here uh, I will fly in space, uh, she uh, agreed with me and uh, maybe she uh, understood me uh, better uh, if I understand her. <laughs> <laughs> Little communications at home. Um, do you think in your in your deepest inner self that there will be a u.s russian joint space station someday yes uh, if you remember uh, several years ago in 1975 we have a beautiful uh, program between our countries as apollo soyuz and after That's this the height of the cold war yes huh? and after this we had the uh, cold barrier right now we have good opinion uh, working together I think we uh, do it. Yeah, well, yeah. let's talk. I have a final question for both of you. Mr. Golden, you, before you came to NASA, worked for a big defense contractor building things like spy satellites to spy on the uh, former Soviet Union, the Russian government, probably some weapons work in your background. This man was a, a, a fighter pilot in the Russian Air Force who taught other people how to fly fighters and bombers, whose job it was to come over here and bomb us to smithereens with nuclear weapons. How do the two of you feel, maybe Mr. Golden go first, about the change that has taken place in the past? couple of years first let me say I'm proud of what I did because I felt I was doing what was necessary to protect the American people but the world has changed and I feel very good about this uh, I feel that I've learned a lot by talking to our colleagues in Russia and I also feel with my newborn grandchild I don't want him to have air raid drills I don't want him to worry about weapons I want him to think about what he could do with his life and this is what we got to do. We can't be afraid of it. Mr. Tito? Yes, I am a military man, and uh, you true, uh, say. Um, but uh, very easy, um, dead uh, uh, to people, to kill, to kill, to kill people. people. Yeah. It's very easy. But uh, live together and uh, working together, it's uh, very difficult, but it's very important for all Earth. Um, Gentlemen, we only have 10 seconds left. Quick question to Mr. Golden. How about the weather for tomorrow? What do you think? Is the shuttle going to get off? Jed Pearson's in charge of the shuttle. He says it looks good, and I trust Jed Pearson.